Hi, I'm Francis. Before I continue, please like and subscribe to hear more about my journey. The sunlight filtered softly through the kitchen window, casting a warm glow over the breakfast I was preparing. My life, up until that fateful day, was the epitome of routine. Wake up, get the kids ready for school, make breakfast, and start the day with a hopeful smile. It wasn't perfect, but it was our life, mine and my children's. That morning, my daughter Lily was especially excited. It was her school's picture day, and she had a new dress hanging in her closet, a beautiful blue one that made her eyes sparkle like the ocean. I still remember how she danced around the kitchen, her laughter a melody that brightened our modest home, but our joy was short-lived. My sister-in-law, Karen, came over unannounced, as usual. She had a habit of taking things without asking, a trait my husband, Mark, always overlooked. That day, she set her eyes on Lily's dress. Wow, this is perfect for Emily's recital, Karen exclaimed, holding up the dress. Lily's face fell, her eyes welling up with tears. Please, Aunt Karen, that's my dress for picture day, Lily pleaded, her voice quivering. Karen scoffed. You'll have other dresses, Lily. Emily needs this more. She turned to leave, the dress in hand. I stepped in, my protective instinct taking over. Karen, Lily has been looking forward to wearing that dress today. Please give it back. Mark walked in at that moment, his expression stern. Francis, let her take it. It's just a dress. But Mark, it's Lily's dress. She... I tried to reason, but Mark's temper flared. Just let it go, Francis, he snapped, his hand raised as if to strike, stopping inches from Lily's face. The room fell silent, the tension thick. Lily sobbed quietly, her dreams for the day shattered. That moment, something inside me broke. I realized I couldn't let this continue, not for one more day. Mark's passivity towards his sister's toxic behavior and his near-violent outburst towards our daughter were the last straws. That night, after Lily and her brother Jake were asleep, I sat at the kitchen table, a mixture of emotions swirling inside me. I was scared, yes, but more than that, I was resolute. I couldn't let my children grow up thinking this was normal, that they had to accept being treated this way. The next morning, with Mark gone to work and Karen undoubtedly off causing havoc elsewhere, I packed our essentials, clothes, important documents, some toys for Lily and Jake. Every item I placed in the suitcase felt like a step towards liberation. Mom, where are we going? Lily asked, her eyes wide with a mix of confusion and hope. We're going on a little adventure, sweetheart, I told her, mustering a smile. A new start, just for us. I took one last look at the home we had built, the good memories overshadowed by the recent pain. With a deep breath, I ushered Lily and Jake out the door, our suitcases in tow. I didn't have a clear destination, just the unshakable belief that anywhere was better than the place that had become our prison. Fear, hope, and a newfound strength coursed through me as we stepped into the unknown, the first day of the rest of our lives. The first few months after we left were a whirlwind of change and adaptation. We found a small apartment in a friendly neighborhood. It wasn't much, but it was ours, a safe haven, free from the shadows of the past. Each morning, as I watched Lily and Jake sleep peacefully, I knew I had made the right decision. Starting over wasn't easy. I juggled two jobs, sometimes working late into the night just to keep us afloat. But with each paycheck, I felt a surge of pride. Mom, I got an A on my math test, Jake announced one evening, his face beaming with pride. And I made a new friend today, Lily chimed in, her smile brighter than I had seen in months. Their achievements, big and small, were my daily reminders that our sacrifices were worth it. I watched them grow more confident and happy, their laughter returning, filling our home with joy. Professionally, I found my footing too. An opportunity came up at a local community center, offering me a managerial position. It was a chance to do something meaningful, to give back to others who were struggling just like we had. I poured my heart into the work, and it paid off. The center flourished, and with it, so did my sense of self-worth and independence. One evening as I closed up the center, my colleague Tina remarked, Francis, you've done wonders here. You're an inspiration. Her words echoed in my mind as I walked home under the starlit sky. For the first time in a long time, I felt genuinely proud of myself. Emotionally, the journey was harder. The scars of the past lingered, often haunting my quiet moments. But I found solace in small things. 
the laughter of my children, the satisfaction of a hard day's work, the supportive smiles of new friends and colleagues. One day, while sorting through old boxes, I came across the photo of Lily in her blue dress, the one she never got to wear for picture day. A pang of sorrow hit me, but it was quickly replaced by a sense of peace. We had moved on, grown stronger. That dress, that moment, was behind us. Mom, are you okay? Lily asked, peering over my shoulder. I hugged her tightly. Better than okay, honey. We've come a long way, haven't we? Yeah, we have, she smiled, her eyes reflecting a resilience mirroring my own. As months turned into years, our new life took shape, more beautiful and fulfilling than I ever imagined. I watched Lily and Jake excel in school and make friends. They were no longer shadowed by fear or uncertainty. We had each other, and that was more than enough. One quiet evening, as I sat on our living room, a cup of coffee in hand, I realized I had found something I hadn't even known I was searching for. Peace. The turmoil of the past had given way to a calm, content present. We had not just survived, we had thrived. While my life with Lily and Jake was blossoming into something beautiful, Mark's life took a starkly different turn. The divorce had hit him harder than he ever expected. He lived in the same house, a constant reminder of the family he had lost. His nights were often spent in solitude, the silence echoing the void left by our departure. His relationship with his sister, Karen, the root of so much turmoil, began to deteriorate. Without me and the kids to focus her negativity on, Karen turned her critical eye towards Mark. Their conversations, once amicable if one-sided, grew strained and bitter. Mark, you could have done more to keep Francis, Karen would say in her usual accusatory tone. Now look at you all alone. But Mark's remorse ran deeper than Karen's words. He started to see the truth behind her actions and how his passivity had cost him his family. The realization weighed heavily on him, a burden he carried every day. Meanwhile, Karen's life was unraveling in its own way. Her husband, long tired of her antics and entitlement, filed for divorce, leaving her financially unstable and socially isolated. Her circle of friends, once charmed by her outward confidence, began to see through her facade, distancing themselves one by one. At the local community center, where I now worked, rumors of Karen's misfortunes trickled in. People spoke in hushed tones about her latest debacle, a failed business venture that left her in significant debt. Her once proud posture was replaced by a defeated slump, her eyes avoiding the knowing glances of former acquaintances. The contrast between our lives was stark. While we found joy in simple pleasures and honest work, Mark and Karen were ensnared in a web of their own making. Justice, it seemed, had not forgotten their deeds. One day, while picking up Jake and Lily from school, I overheard a couple of parents talking about Karen. Did you hear about Karen Smith? One mother whispered. Her house is up for sale. They say she can't afford it anymore. The news didn't bring me joy, but it did bring a sense of closure. The universe, in its mysterious ways, was balancing the scales. As for Mark... His attempts to reconnect with me and the kids were met with polite but firm resistance. Lily and Jake were old enough to understand why we left and chose to keep their distance. They had forgiven him in their hearts, but were cautious, their trust once broken, not easily mended. One evening, while sitting on the couch with my kids, watching a movie, I received a text from Mark. I'm sorry for everything. I miss you all, it read. I looked at the screen for a long moment, the words blurring slightly. Everything okay, Mom? Jake asked, noticing my silence. I smiled, squeezing his hand. Yes, honey, everything is just fine. I didn't reply to Mark. Some words, once said, couldn't be taken back, and some actions couldn't be undone. We had moved on, building a life of happiness and contentment, far from the shadows of the past. As I watched Lily and Jake laugh at the movie, their faces alight with joy, I knew we had found our peace, and somewhere... In a house that was once a home, Mark and Karen faced the consequences of their choices, alone in the beds they had made. The sun was setting, casting a golden hue over the park where I was watching Lily and Jake play. They were chasing each other around, their laughter a testament to the new life we had built together. It was during these quiet, happy moments that I felt most grateful for the choices I had made. As I sat there, lost in thought, a familiar figure approached. It was Mark looking older and wearier than I remembered. My heart skipped a beat, not out of fear, 
but surprise. He stopped a few feet away, his eyes holding a mixture of regret and longing. Francis, I've been wanting to talk to you, he started, his voice hesitant. I stood up, maintaining a calm composure. What is it, Mark? He took a deep breath. I've had a lot of time to think, to see where I went wrong. I'm sorry, truly sorry for everything. I was hoping, maybe we could start over? His words hung in the air, a plea for a second chance. But too much had happened, too much had changed. Mark, I appreciate your apology, I said, my voice steady. But too much has changed. We've moved on, the kids and I. We're happy now. He looked pained, but I knew I had to be firm for the sake of my children and the life we had built. I understand, he replied, his voice barely above a whisper. I wish you the best, Mark, I said, not unkindly. But our paths are different now. He nodded, a silent acknowledgement of the finality of my words, and walked away. Watching him go, I felt a sense of closure, a chapter finally closed. Lily and Jake ran up to me, their faces flushed with excitement. Mom, did you see how fast I was running? Jake exclaimed. Yes, I did, honey. You were like lightning, I replied, smiling. As we walked home, I reflected on the journey we had been on. It wasn't easy, but it was worth every struggle, every tear, every moment of doubt. I occasionally heard about Mark and Karen through the grapevine. Mark continued to live in the same house, a shadow of his former self. Karen's troubles seemed unending, her life a series of misfortunes, each of her own making. As for us, we were content, surrounded by a community that loved and supported us. Our home was filled with laughter, love, and the warmth of shared experiences. We had each other, and that was more than enough. Sitting on our porch one evening, watching the stars twinkle in the night sky, I held Lily and Jake close. You know, kids, we've been through a lot, but I wouldn't change a thing. Our journey made us who we are today, I said softly. We're like superheroes, right, Mom? Jake said, his eyes shining with admiration. Yes, honey, I replied, hugging them tighter. We're exactly like superheroes. And in that moment, under the vast, starry sky, I knew we had truly triumphed. Our future was bright, filled with endless possibilities and the promise of continued happiness. Has there ever been a time in your life where you had to make a difficult decision for the betterment of yourself and your loved ones, similar to Francis's choice to leave and start anew? How did it impact your life? Share your stories and thoughts in the comments below. And if you found Francis's journey inspiring, please give this video a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Your support means a lot and your interaction helps keep these stories coming. Thank you for watching.